Hi guys, I'm Dr. Arjun Goswami, aka Dr. Doobler. And in this video, I will tell you all that you need to know about depression. So first of all, depression is actually the leading cause of disability all across the world. But since it is a mental disorder, it is not that well understood, even by the doctors. But don't worry, I've got you covered. In this video, I will tell you all that you should know about depression. So let's start. So there is a difference between feeling depressed and having depression. They are two separate entities and we should not confuse the two. We all have felt depressed at some point of time during our lives. For example, when we lose our job or we get bad grades or when we go through a heartbreak, that's a tough one. Or probably when you're stuck at home during the lockdown. But these things change with the change in circumstances. So they're not depression. Depression, on the other hand, is very different. There are several types of depression. So coming to the various types of depression. First is major depression. Major depression is also called as clinical depression and it lasts for more than two weeks. It has few symptoms which will be discussed further along the video. Second one is persistent depressive disorder. So since it lasts for more than two years, it is called as persistent depressive disorder. Third one is bipolar disorders in which you have episodes of elevated mood and then depressed moods. Now the fourth one is seasonal affective disorder. It is the period of major depression which occurs during the winter months since the days are short and it's more common in countries with long winter periods. The fifth one is psychotic depression in which you have symptoms of depression and also symptoms of psychosis like hallucination, delusions and paranoia and the final sixth one is postpartum depression which usually occurs in women just after giving birth probably weeks or months after giving childbirth now that you know about the different types of depression let's dig a little deeper and let's see what happens in our brain during depression by the way if you're enjoying this video a sub would be great for this channel Earlier, it was believed that lack of neurotransmitters, serotonin and dopamine were the main culprit of depression. These are the feel-good chemicals in our brain. But according to the recent studies, problem is much more complex. Just like any other disease in depression, our body shows physical changes as well. According to a study conducted by Harvard Med, out of 24 females suffering from depression, 9 to 13% had changes in brain. PET scans, MRI scans, etc. showed that patients suffering from depression have small frontal lobes and small hippocampus, which is primarily for memory and emotion. And longer a person is depressed, smaller this portion of the brain becomes. Cells in our brain, also called as neurons, literally degenerate. And when these cells regrow, our mood also improves. So now some scientists believe that treatment should revolve around neurogenesis, in which new neurons are created. So our brain actually goes through physical changes during depression? That is fascinating. Now let's see some of the causes of depression. So the primary cause is genetics. Center of Addiction and Mental Health conducted a study which showed that there is a specific gene which is linked to suicidal behavior. This is serotonin transporter gene. People with a variation in this gene are more prone to suicides. Another cause is environmental triggers like death of a loved one, suffering from chronic pain or illnesses, sexual abuse, going through a really bad breakup. People addicted to alcohol and substance abuse are more prone to depression. Also people addicted to gaming are more likely to go through depression. And people in the age group of 15 to 25 and 60 plus are more prone to depression. As I told you that there are few symptoms of depression, let's see what these symptoms actually are. Low mood, loss of interest in activities which you loved before, feeling guilty or worthless, changes in appetite, you might gain a lot of weight or lose a lot of weight, poor concentration, too much sleep or too little sleep, basically your sleep cycle is disturbed, loss of energy, recurrent thoughts of suicide and finally restlessness or slowness. If you think you are experiencing 5 of these symptoms, then it's probably right for you to see a psychologist or a psychiatrist and seek help. But what are the treatment options that are available? 
Medicine and psychotherapy goes hand in hand for treatment. In fact, family support is most important in such cases. In extreme cases, ECT or electroconvulsive therapy can be helpful where controllable seizures are given to the brain. In addition to therapy and medication, there are a few lifestyle changes that you guys can make which will help you combat depression and also the side effects that are caused due to the medication. Here's three of them. Starting with the most important one, that is exercise. Exercise not only decreases the cortisol level in your body, which is the stress hormone, it also elevates the endorphins in your body. And these endorphins, they help you elevate your mood. So I highly recommend exercise to all of you. No matter how busy you are, take out some time and at least incorporate 40 to 45 minutes of workout in your daily routine. It will help you out with depression. And the second one is diet. While there is no diet to cure depression, there are some food that you should avoid and some food that you should consume. Foods that you should avoid are cacnate products, junk food and sugary foods. These foods, they actually hijack your brain and impact your mental health. But the foods that you should consume are fruits, vegetable and unprocessed food. They are good for your body. And the final one is stress management. Stress not only triggers depression, it also intensifies the symptoms of depression. But there are some hacks to manage your stress. And these are chewing a gum. So when you chew a gum, your brain feels relaxed. So you can always chew a gum whenever you're feeling tensed. Second one is listening to soothing music. When you listen to soothing music, they generate alpha waves in your brain and this actually decreases the stress level in your body. And the final one is you can go for regular workout. Exercise is important to decrease your stress. And if not these, you can also go for yoga and meditation. So now you guys know a lot about depression, but there are still four key points which you should keep in mind. First is encourage somebody going through depression to seek medical help. Just like a fracture which cannot heal by itself, you need a doctor for depression as well. Now the second point is, depression is not a personality trait, it is a mental disorder and you have to treat it like that. And third point is that you need to encourage people to have discussion about depression. The more we guys discuss about depression, the less will be suicidal rates in the society. And finally, don't compare the times you have felt depressed with somebody who is going through depression because that just might make them feel guilty. So with this, our video has come to an end. I hope you learned a lot from this and I think you guys know much more about depression than you did before. And if you do, then please hit the like button and the subscribe button and please share it with your friends. Alright, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.